QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Enter transaction for owner deposit or loan deposit using bank feeds. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our bank feeds test file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. In prior presentations, we've been entering information from the bank into the system so we can practice with the bank feeds. We're going to be continue on with that now looking at deposits, deposits this time from the owner. We first want looking at our mock bank statement to rethink our system for how we're going to be constructing this. And we're thinking about constructing this from a system where we're not only on a cash basis, but actually constructing our financials mainly from the information from the bank, waiting till it clears the bank and then constructing our financials from the bank. Under a system such as that with the use of the bank feeds, then any deposit that we have, we're going to assume by default that it is some form of income. Now, as we've seen, if they're going to be electronic deposits, if they go through something like an Amazon or if we get them through some online uh, payment, then we might know who the customer is and we might have enough detail in order to break out the customer and possibly the type of accounts and give us some more detail in that format. However, if the deposits are grouped in some other way, uh, like if we just deposit cash into the system, uh, we may not have then the added detail that we would for, for singular kind of electronic type of payments and in that system if we're still reliant on the bank then we're simply going to have the default position to record all deposits as income and it might just be generic income in that case because we don't have the added information we just assume that it's a deposit and therefore it's going to be income because that's going to be our system or wait until it clears the bank well if that's the case that works good but you need to make sure that you uh, distinguish anything that's not from the customer most deposits will be from a customer but you could have a couple that would not be. For example, you might have the owner putting money into the company in order to invest in the company. Hopefully that doesn't happen all the time because th we would like the system to be that the owner's taking money out of the company. We would like to be seeing the owner's activity over here on the withdrawals side where we saw that we can have that electronic withdrawal. We can note that that's from the owner, not record an expense, but rather put it on the books in the equity section as a draw. But if the owner does put money into the business, we need to make sure we note to that because if we do not, then we're just going to group it in income. We're going we're gonna to count the owner putting money into their own business as income. And if you use this for taxes, they're going to end up paying taxes on the money that they put in as if it was from somebody else, another company. And that wouldn't be good. So we need to be able to note, uh, first of all, that's the main thing that you got to be able to distinguish. Uh, so it depends on what kind of what your deposits look like. You want to make sure that you can distinguish a deposit that, that is not from a customer from someone like the owner. Or when you put money into your own business, you want to make sure that you note that so you don't accidentally include it as a deposit or have a bookkeeper uh, included as a deposit if you have someone else helping you out with the, uh, with the books. You also might have a deposit for like a loan, which would be a similar situation. So you might have money going into the business, not from a customer, but a loan. And once again, you need to distinguish that item so that you don't record it as income and then pay taxes on basically income for a loan when you actually took out a loan. So to do that, let's go over to our bank feeds and let's let's uh, open up the bank feeds here. Go into the banking drop down. We're going to go to the bank center. We're going to go to the bank to the uh, bank feeds and then the bank feed center. We're going to move over to the unrecognized items here. And so I'm looking for deposits. So I'm going to hit the cog first. I'm going to check off everything, but I'm not going to click on the class here. And then on the filter, we might want to filter by just the deposits. So let's take a look at deposits here. Uh, well, let's do that one more time. It seemed to filters being a little funny here. Filter by deposit and OK. So there we have our deposits. So this is the one right here. We're going to assume this is from the owner. We're going to assume this deposit uh, came from the owner. So we don't want to do our normal system, which would be just to put it in as revenue, but put it in as a, an equity type of a, account again. Now, if it was a loan, we would do the same thing, except we would put it to instead of income account, we would put it to a loan payable. So let's open up the financial statements and see where those kind of items would lie. Open up the reports drop down company and financial. Let's take a look at the balance sheet first. Going to change the dates up top in the customized reports from 010121 to, uh, to, I'm sorry, 010120 to 123120 and run that report and let's open up the profit and loss reports drop down company and financial profit and loss that's going to be from 
0.01020212312120. There's our P and L. Back to the balance sheet. Normally, a deposit would be increasing cash, and we basically have it as a default going to the profit and loss, assuming that it would be income from a customer, and it would go to some income account. Now, if we didn't have if we didn't have electronic transfers and we didn't know who gave us the money or what category, we only have one category of type of income, we might just have one line item in income called revenue, and we would just be putting all deposits in there. We need then to distinguish the deposit that's not revenue, such as a loan or a deposit from the owner, and then make sure that we do not add it in revenue, because if we do, it's going to increase the net income. It'll probably be put on the tax return, and then we'll be paying taxes on a loan as if it's income and or a deposit from the owner as if it's income. So what we want to do is go to the balance sheet. We're still going to have an increase to cash, but the other side, if it is from the owner, needs to go to the equity section. So within the equity section, if you have a sole proprietorship, you could put it into the, the owner's equity, which would be fine. It would net out with owner's equity or you might break it out into its own account called investments. So you can track like we did here with the draws, which means all the money that's coming out that's going from the business to the owner. You can track it in an investment account, which would track all the money that's going in uh, from the owner into the company, into the business. Now, if it was a loan, then of course you would still have cash going down here. But instead of the other side, the offset being to equity, it would be to the third party section, which would be the liability section. You'd have a liability that would be going to uh, you know, a bank or something like that, that, that that you would have to set up and then make your payments on the loan to that, to that liability account. So we'll assume it's going to be an, an equity item here and we're going to set up an account. I'll set up a new account in this section. It'll be an equity type of account rather than an income type of account for the owner investment. So we're going to go on if there, if there isn't one set up. There might be one set up already. Let's check it out. So this is going to be the deposit. I'm going to say the payee is the owner. So I think we put the owner owner name. And this is going to be the memo. And I'll just say this is a deposit. So it's a deposit. And then let's say deposit from owner. Owner. And then the account. I'm going to hit the drop down. See if we have. It should be an equity account. We have nothing for the for the investments. So. Uh, we had the draws was set up automatically by QuickBooks. I want to set up a separate one that will be an equity type of account down here for the owner investment. So let's go to add one. And then I'm going to say drop down. This needs to be an equity type of account. It's going to be owner investments and something like that. Save that one. And uh, this is another one. You can't really memorize this report. Unless when you put the money in, you do it with an electronic transfer or something, and it gives you your name here, it gives you some kind of reference number that you can that you can make sure to to pick up. So this is one because it's rare. It's not one that's going to be happening all the time, and because you don't have a definitive name, oftentimes depending on how you put that deposit into the system, you're going to have to leave it, and you kind of want to leave it here so that you can make sure that when you do your bank feeds, you go through it and say, oh, that one, I want to make sure that I do not, you know, add that as default as basically an income line item, but put it into the investment side. I don't want to pay taxes on the money I put into my own business. So I'm going to then say, let's add that and then OK and see if it does what we would expect it to be doing. We're going to go to the balance sheet and double click on the checking account up top. And we're going to see that uh, then we had that decrease for the deposit. Here it is here. So there it is. And then the other side is going to go, I'm going to close this back out. It's going to go to the equity section. So in the equity section down below, we've got the investments, owner investment down here, double clicking on that item. And then we see it, uh, we see our activity in the form of a deposit uh, form. So closing that back out. And this should, this should kind of make sense because remember the accounting equation is basically assets equal liabilities plus equity. So if we put the money in, then obviously the then assets go up and th those assets are attributable to meaning if we were to liquidate the company you would think that the owner the company would give it back to the owner because even in a sole proprietorship we think of the owner as kind of like a separate entity so if we liquidated then obviously you would think that 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 uh, amount would go back to the owner and the other side then should be reflected in the equity section but not be rolling through income which also will flow into the equity section because it wasn't f related to earnings from outside sources, but rather was uh, just money that was put in. 
So it kind of bypasses the, the income statement. So that, and so if you go to the profit and loss, then there's going to be no effect on, on the profit and loss.